women and girls, there's been um, a lot of talk recently about instances of police officers who have attacked, raped women and girls on the streets of London. What are you doing about that to prevent that happening going forward? So in the, in the last few years has been at last publicity given to the fact that every three days across our country, a woman is killed at the hands of a man every three days. And that's a sobering fact. Recently, we've seen not just the tragic murders of Sarah Everard, um, you know, Zara Alina, you know, Bieber and uh, Nicole, uh, you know, and many others, Sabina Nessa. But also we've seen people who we entrust to keep us safe, peace officers, police officers, the people we go to when we're the victims of crime, being involved in the most serious crimes possible. Sarah Everard was uh, uh, abducted by a man using his warrant card, uh, raped and killed by a serving police officer. We had uh, David Carrick, somebody who'd been a police officer for almost 20 years, we discovered throughout most of his 20 years, had been a prolific sexual offender, using the fact he's a police officer to commit some of those crimes. But also, it appears there were opportunities for the police during the vetting process to find out this guy was a criminal and not just stop him being a police officer, but take action against him. My view that I've been making clear for a number of years now, and I've been criticized for this, is I think there are systemic cultural issues in the police service. And one of the reasons why I ultimately, lost conf I ultimately lost confidence in the previous commissioner was my lack of belief in her ability to understand this is an issue, have a plan to address this, have a plan to win back the trust and confidence of Londoners. And so we've got to make sure we have a reforming commissioner doing this job. Unless the guy at the top or the woman at the top understands the problem, how are you going to fix it? I think the new commissioner and his deputy understand there's a problem and they've got a plan to fix it. But they're taking on board the recommendations from an outsider. You can't mark your own homework. You need somebody else to look into things, tell you how bad things are, make recommendations and follow them through. So we've got an outsider, Louise Casey, to look into what's going on in the Met Police Service. She's published an interim report. The commissioner's accepted all the findings. She will now publish her final report later on this year. We need to change the rules around how police officers are employed. So if a member of your staff had a nickname, the bastard, that would raise questions for you, right? Why is this guy's nickname amongst his colleagues, the bastard? Or other nicknames that police officers involved in this stuff have had? No action taken against them because it's very difficult for the commission and others to get rid of dodgy officers. The regulations make it difficult. But we're not asking necessarily in all cases for a criminal prosecution. We're asking for those officers to be at least sacked. So we're lobbying the government to change the regulations to make it easier for the commission to get rid of dodgy officers. We've set up a hotline for people can ring in and police officers can ring in about dodgy behaviour of other officers. From City Hall, with that government support, from City Hall we're investing more money in ramping up the vetting processes, right? This guy should have been spotted a mile away. I've also asked the commissioner, he's, he, well, he, it was his idea to be fair, to go back 10 years and look at every single time a police officer has had a complaint made against them of this nature, to see if any other opportunities missed with other officers. Uh, we've also got a new unit, which we're invested in, an anti-abuse and corruption unit. But my view is this, by the way, in London, we've shown a spotlight on this, but there are other police forces around the country where, you know, I'm sure there are other issues where that spotlight's not been shown yet. And so it's really important for us to recognise these are systemic cultural issues across our country that demand addressing.